Ja, herzlich willkommen zu einer neuen Ausgabe SI Talk und bei mir heute Interview Millennium Potash. Es geht, wie es schon im Titel heißt, um Potash, um Kalium. Ich war letzte Woche bei Einkapitalforum Kalium, Kalium Salz und die ist eigentlich ein spannendes Thema. Düngemittel, Fertilizer sind stark im Kommen, ist gerade mit dem Ukraine-Russland-Krieg auch ein, ein sehr gefragtes Düngemittel. Und ja, deswegen freue ich mich schon. Millennium Potash, äh, Fahrrad Apasov äh, ist äh, der Chairman and Director des Unternehmens und er wird uns das jetzt äh, mal kurz vorstellen. Ja, yeah, thank you for your time. Uh, sorry for the delay. Uh, but uh, no so, good to be sometimes here. this can happen. Um, Uh, I, I said in my German introduction, I, I was last week um, on, on the Eigenkapital Forum, that is the biggest European um, analyst conference, uh, and there was Kali and Salz. Kali and Salz is one of the major producers of uh, potash, and they have also a big mine in, in, in Canada. And um, that was very interesting to see uh, what they think about the potash ma market itself and uh, how uh, the, the problems are uh, what created with the EU. Ukrainian Russia war um, and and this very interesting it looks like that this very uh, there's a high demand for it um, and and um, so uh, and there are not so many projects outside they are really uh, they are interesting to can invest that's um, and for this is I think it's a really a pleasure to have you here uh, and maybe you can explain us a little bit your point of view and but much more interesting is about your project but before we start about the project maybe you can tell us a little bit more about uh, your your background your your history and how, how it's come that you are now looking for potash yeah sure Joe. good good, uh, good speaking to you again so look i mean i'll start maybe with uh with the background on our group and myself so this is our third potash project believe it or not we've had two major projects in the past, we've uh, developed them and sold them. One of them to Kalu and Salts, uh, the one that is in Saskatchewan that they now operate and produce 2.2 million tons uh, from, that was actually uh, our project. The company was called Potash One. And uh, you know we took it from early stage and ended up selling it to K plus S and they actually built that project. And uh, the other Potash project we had was called Alana Potash that was in Ethiopia. And we ended up selling it to an Israeli company called Israel Chemicals. Um, again, exact same model from early stage all the way to the point where it was ready to go into construction. And we got a pretty good offer and we sold the company. And the most of a recent project we had, uh, Joe, was a company called also Millennial, but Millennial Lithium um, with a lithium project in Argentina. And we started with that project in 2017. And again, we sold it uh, to another large uh, lithium company out of Canada called Lithium Americas in early 2022. Um, there was a bidding war for it. We had uh, two Chinese bidders in addition to Lithium Americas. We had Ganfeng Lithium, a large lithium producer out of China, CATL, the largest battery manufacturer out of China as well. But in the end, Lithium Americas outbid them, so we sold the company. So our strategy, our model is very straightforward in that we find um, previously explored projects uh, you know, in stable jurisdictions. By stable, I mean not only political and economically stable, but the uh, jurisdictions that welcome mining investments where permitting environment is a lot more conducive to doing business. Um, and then we take the project for, through all the development stages, meaning You know, first uh, exploration and development, uh, specifically confirmation of resource, and then we do feasibility study. And then, of course, uh, we secure a mining permit and we either build it or uh, we exit through M&A transactions. So um, that, that is my background. Uh, in all of these previous companies, I was either a co-founder or president CEO in this company. I'm a co-founder and the chairman. Um, and uh, we're planning to do the exact same thing, uh, uh, Joe, here. Uh, we started with this project in March, and we're hoping that in the next 18 to 24 months, we'll position this either for a construction start or a potential M&A. So um, 18 to 20 months? Uh, 18 to 24 months, yeah. And as, uh, you know, in other words, in the year and a half to two years, we think this project will be ready to, to go into construction or potentially, wow. you know, for um, M&A. Is, is this also um, a question in uh, from which region you are working? Uh, this project is in Gabon. Um, so in Africa, 
Uh, is it uh, easier to permit something or is it itself comes from the project that maybe potash is easier to permit than, um, for example, a gold mine or something? Yeah. 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 So look, Joe, um, uh, Gabon is a is a uh, resource country. It's a big oil and gas producer. It is a member of OPEC. So they're quite familiar with the resources. They also started diversifying away from oil and gas and opened up their mining sector about four years ago. So quite a, a few large companies went in there. Aramid out of France has a large manganese production there. There are Indian companies, again, with manganese production. Fortescue out of um uh, Australia also has an iron ore project. They just started shipping the iron ore recently. So they're quite well familiar with both oil and gas and mining. And in terms of permitting, they're actually very supportive. They really want these projects to go forward, regardless whether it's potash, iron ore, manganese, and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, but they realize that the potash, uh, this particular potash project that we have in the south of the country will be the driver of economic growth <clears throat> because there's not much of a economic activity in that part of Gabon. So that also helps our cause. Um, you know, go, maybe going back to your uh, uh, initial question on uh, <clears throat> on what's going on in the in the market, in the potash world, maybe brief on that, and then I'll tell a bit more about the project. So look, uh, you know, uh, you know, you already heard it from K plus S again, the, they know the market obviously very well, uh, having been operating German mines for, for decades and, and most recently the Canadian mine. It's uh, the potash sector is highly geographically concentrated. So when you look at the potash producers, only about a half a dozen producers and three countries produce almost 70% of uh, world's potash. So it's, it's uh, Russia, Belarus, and Canada. Um, so uh, it, it had those three countries have basically stranglehold on the potash sector, but on potash production, I should say, but the rest of the world imports potash. So you can imagine when you know the war in Ukraine broke out, um, you know, the U.S. Uh, slapped sanctions on, on Belarus, for example, because Belarus obviously is a large producer as well. And both Belarus and Russia uh, have been a little bit constrained in their, you know, in their production capacity. Now, there's still quite a bit of production come, uh, you know, going on, and of course, the material coming out of both countries, but going mostly eastward, going to China, to India, some of it still goes to Brazil, but none of it is coming to Europe anymore, and definitely not the eastern seaboard of the U.S., so when you look at the whole map, you realize that in the last 20 years or so, there have been only one or two new entrants in the market. That was, of course, uh, K plus as a Saskatchewan project, the one that we sold them. Um, then there's a project in Laos in Southeast Asia and, and in Russia, uh, Eurocamps project in Russia. That's about it. Uh, but again, when you think about it, two of the, uh, out of those three were again in those traditional uh, potash producing regions. Canada and Russia. So the world needs potash, high quality, low cost potash coming from other parts of the world and specifically in Africa, because Africa as a continent is a large user and importer of potash, but uh, it has no domestic production. They have phosphate production, nitrogen production, but no potash production. So we're positioning our project to become the first African potash producer um, that will be feeding uh, material or potash specifically to the market mm -hmm. in, in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, I have uh, already your presentation and uh, we see that the project is very in the south of, of Gabon, uh, close to Congo. Um, and um, But when you, you have some pictures in there, it looks really great when from the core, um, uh, it's shining really red. Uh, so it's, it's, um, it's, it's, you see it uh, that here exactly. is, is uh, really um, potash in. Uh, but uh, compared to, to uh, Saskatchewan, um, this is planned that you use uh, a leaching uh, the, the, the potash out of the, of the ground and not do a traditional uh, mining, uh, uh, what normally Kali and Salz do in Germany and so on. I heard that Kali and Salz is now moving also to... Uh, um, to solution uh, mining. Yeah, solution yeah. mining. Um, um, is this now... Um, more cost efficient than the traditional way, or or and and is then also, uh, or can you say some numbers what this really mean for them? So if you go a traditional way, traditional mining, or you get um, more so solution money. So uh, yeah, Joe, you you actually uh, touched on a very important uh, point here because we are planning solution mining in this project, 
And our previous two projects, the ones that I mentioned, the one in Saskatchewan in Canada and in Ethiopia, they were also amenable to solution mining. And when we sold our Saskatchewan project to K plus S, they actually continued with the same method. So in other words, they built a solution mining operation. So it's not underground, it's not open pit or anything of the sort, it's solution mining operation. Just before I go into the uh, benefits or advantages of solution mining, maybe I can explain in a nutshell what it entails, what it means uh, to do solution mining. So basically you, you drill into your deposit, into your ore body, and you pump saline solution, salt water into your um, a deposit, you dissolve potash underground, then you pump it back up to the surface, and then you evaporate water, and then you go through uh, extracting potash or separating potash from the rest of your um, of your brine. Uh, so it is it is very cost effective. You're absolutely right. Uh, your capex is much lower than building an underground operation. You don't sink shaft, you don't move earth, you don't excavate. So it's huge advantages right there. Um, and I will come to specific advantages that solution mining affords us in Gabon in a second, but just on, on, uh, in, a general, um, in a general note, uh, we also have a minimal environmental impact with solution mining. So in other words, yeah, since you don't, again, do the traditional mining, you don't move a lot of earth, all you do is drilling into your ore body and then uh, basically bringing the brine back up to the surface, you have minimal impact on surface, you have minimal impact in general, you don't need a huge area for that either. So you can basically produce the same amount of potash um, with probably a tenth of the environmental impact of a traditional mm -hmm. or conventional mm -hmm. mining method. Now, in the case of our Gabon project, we have additional advantages uh, because we're using solution mining because the thickness of our potash horizons uh, is one of the highest. So we have one of the thickest potash deposits in the world uh, from what we see in the northern part, we have about 70, 80 meter thickness in the south, probably up to 200 meters of thickness. And uh, that means that, you know, our sustaining capex and our operating uh, costs will be lower too, because we basically need to create fewer caverns that will be operating for decades instead of drilling every single year. And that's very important. Uh, the second thing that we have here, we're right on the coast. So the location of your project is very important. Because being right on the coast not only allows you to ship your product more easily, but also we can use seawater to pump into the ore bottle. Um, because of geological development, um, most of these potash basins are in the middle of continents. You know, like for example, the ones in Germany, those are very old potash mines in Russia, Belarus, or in Saskatchewan, in Canada. Um, they really are not close to, to, to the seashore. Uh, to the coastline, so they have to use fresh water, they have to add salt to it, and that means extra water permitting, obviously extra cost as well. So we have a huge advantage here of not only having very thick potash horizons, but also being right on the coast and being um, able to access the seawater for this purpose as well. So overall solution mining is a lot, lot better in terms of the cost structure and in terms of its uh, environmental impact. Mm -hmm. So that's mean you use uh, the seawater to pump it down, bring it up. Um, and there is also a big chain, uh, I think it's slide 17, infrastructure built up, called it port development progress. Um, so you're already also close to a port. So that's mean you can uh, use the facility also to ship it then uh, in all direction of, of the world, especially also to Brazil. Exactly. Exactly. So, you, Joe, we're pretty close to the port. Uh, there are two ports there. One, one is under construction. The other one is already mm -hmm. uh, exists. Um, you know, the one that is the bigger one that is already in there is not really equipped for potash at this point. So, okay. the, the, uh, the smaller potash, uh, sorry, smaller port that is being built on the lagoon, um, it is actually, uh, you know, tailor made for uh, for for uh, customers for uh, potash, iron ore, and so forth. So, it's specifically for resources in that part of. Gabon, and it will be ready way before we're ready to actually start production. Mm -hmm. So so that will be the one that we'll be using initially, and your absolute right will be able to use it not only to ship to other parts of Africa, but also ship it to Brazil, for example, across the Atlantic. Um, Brazil is the largest importer of potash in the world. Last year, they imported 13 million tons. So uh, considering that we'll be producing four or 500,000 tons to start with, will have no trouble uh, selling that product either in Africa or in Brazil. But mm -hmm. that's a huge advantage again, because 
even if you look at large projects being developed, let's say by BHP and Saskatchewan, Janssen project, they still have to figure out how they're going to ship the product out. Mm -hmm. You know, the port issue, uh, obviously the rail capacity and so forth. In our case, that's not going to be a problem. Okay. Um, there's also uh, on page 21, um, the Podesh development plan. Um, so uh, up to 25. So that's mean when I'm looking right, um, you're already working on the environmental permitting. Is this right? No, we haven't started. The plan is to start next year. Yeah. So, okay. yeah, yeah the f first stage for us will be drilling in the north, which we, we've done most of it. We'll do some more early next year. Uh, put out our main resource estimate that will be coming in the next few weeks. Uh, and then what we call a PEA, preliminary economic assessment. Yeah. And then after that, we're going to start doing bankable feasibility study and environmental permit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, capital structure. Yes. So, so the, the company, uh, you know, I'm sure your, your listeners, your viewers will see where it listed um, on Toronto Stock Exchange Venture, but we also trade, of course, in uh, weather counter in Frankfurt and in the U.S. Um, you know, we started with this company only this year. So this is a fairly new opportunity for, for everyone who's listening, uh, watching. We started in March. We did the RTO, so uh, we, we took over this project. And, um, you know, we have pretty tight, you know, share structure right now. We have only about uh, less than 60 million shares outstanding. Um, we, meaning the board and the management, control about 30% of the stock. Um, and the rest is also actually, we know where it is because uh, it was mostly the folks who have supported us in many of our previous projects. They, they're the major shareholders as well. Um, and in terms of, uh, you know, geographical uh, breakdown, we have mostly out of, the shareholders are mostly out of Canada, out of Germany, out of the UK, a little bit out of, uh, out of the Middle East and the US. Um, in terms of our cash position, we, we raised $2 million in July, so we have about half of it with us right now, so that should be enough for us to take us through both 43-101, the major resource estimate, and a preliminary economic assessment. And next year, um, you know, we'll look into uh, raising more capital. Uh, we do have some interested parties now as well. These are basically family offices and strategics. By strategics, I mean the, you know, large fertilizer distributors and off-takers, um, as well as traders. So if anything happens between now, and let's say um, 43101 or PEA, that will be most likely with either um, a large family office or uh, one of the strategics. But in terms of market rates, that will most likely happen next year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but when you tell uh, this 1 million takes you over this resource calculation uh, PEA, it means also that the costs are really low. Uh, to do this, then normally when yes. you have PA, it can go to 10 million, 50 million sometimes. But um, so this is really cost efficient. So uh, brings me exactly. to, to, to the point. Uh, so what do you expect that before you can make a, a production decision uh, end of 25, how much money you need to, to come to this point? So we will probably need to raise another $10 million dollars between now and let's say early 2025. Um, that will take us all the way through further drilling, bankable feasibility study, environmental permitting, all the way to the point where the project is shovel ready, so to speak, you know, they're ready for mm -hmm. construction. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that and, but that will be again done in obviously in different, at different stages and different tranches. Most likely, you know, we'll do one on the back of PEA next mm -hmm. year and then on the back of uh, new drill results. Because uh, what we've done now is just in the northern part of your and, and you're going to see in, uh, in, in the 43101 main resource assessment, it's just a small part of the northern uh, you know, section of the property, and it's already very large. Uh, you know, and uh, we think that we can increase that, that uh, resource in the north alone significantly and then, of course, South is going to have a lot more material as well. So that's why we think that you know we'll we'll need to put the forty three one one out first, and then continue drilling in the north um, to expand that resource. Um, and then after that, of course, we'll go straight into bankable feasibility study. And whatever we're going to have in the South, it's going to be a huge upside potential there, mm -hmm. blue sky, so to speak. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. Um... We already have 20 minutes. I know exactly you have a new 
um, uh, other meeting uh, right uh, really close uh, to this to this meeting so thank you for your time i think it was really a great update or a great first introduction i must say uh, I know you from the from the um, past, uh, also from the project. Um, it's very interesting to have really um, or see that uh, the same group coming and and and, and working again. And and uh, yeah, hopefully you have the same success uh, the, in the past. And I think you're in the right area. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you. you for thank you for your time. Thank you for the introduction. And um, yeah, hopefully we have time to talk maybe next year. Um, another another round. Then your share price itself, it's it's not really. When I look at the share performances, it looks like all the other stocks yeah. uh, in Canada. Yeah. So it's, it's the right time to get involved now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Be, that's right. Before we go into the new year <laughs> and before the big news come out. Yeah. Is, uh, do you have also Texel selling in? Do yeah, sell probably. In? Yeah, yeah. We would like like everybody else gets hit, but I mean we we've held on to it pretty well. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's it's still you know at the lowest point, so it's probably the perfect time to uh, start buying some stock. Mm, looks good. Okay, yeah. thank you for your time. Uh, thank you. And um, yeah, good luck with all the drilling and uh, with with uh, the resource uh, calculation. So and hopefully we can do then at the next update. Thanks, Lajo. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye. So, jetzt noch eine kurze Zusammenfassung. Ähm, ja, der Aktienkurs schaut ja desaströs aus, äh, wie viele andere Aktien auch. Äh, er hat aber wirklich sehr wenige Aktien draußen. Das heißt, die ganze Marktkapitalisierung inklusive Warrant ist eigentlich bei, bei 10, 12 Millionen. Ähm, das ist eigentlich extrem wenig. Ähm, die Gruppe hat es bewiesen, dass sie in der Vergangenheit äh, schon äh, was äh, leisten kann. Und ich glaube, das schaut auch so aus, dass sie das in der Zukunft auch ganz äh, gut äh, hinkriegen können. Ähm, ja, ähm, was soll man sagen? Potash, also wie gesagt, einmal nur seine Vergangenheit. Er hat Potash One, hat er an Kali und Salz ver äh, verkauft. Dann hat er ein Potash-Projekt irgendwo in Afrika gehabt, das hat er an eine israelische Gruppe verkauft. Ähm, dann hat er Millennium Lithium gehabt, das hat er an äh, American Lithium verkauft. Ähm, und jetzt ist sozusagen das ein neues Projekt, das ist eigentlich erst seit am Start, seit, ähm, äh, seit Februar, März. Äh, was ist Potash in Gabon? Gabon liegt hier äh, in, in Afrika, äh, in der Nähe hier vom, vom Kongo. Ähm, man sieht es hier schon sehr schön, ähm, das, äh, ja, das Kalium äh, ist, ist wirklich, das sieht man wunderbar, ja, das ist die schöne Hand am Kalium, das sieht man schon an der Farbe selber. Sie wollen ähm, ähm, äh, Solution äh, äh, Drilling, nicht Drilling, äh, Methode verwenden, das heißt, sie pumpen eigentlich Salzwasser runter, das löst das Kalium raus, die äh, haben dann die salzhaltige Lösung, pumpen es rauf, dann wird quasi das Wasser wieder davon äh, abgespalten, wahrscheinlich wieder rückgeführt ähm, und dadurch ist es extrem billig, bringt äh, sehr stark die Capex unten, hat allerdings, und das hat er auch gesagt, sehr geringen Environmental also Umwelteinfluss, weil sie eben nur diese Bohrlöcher sind, wo das Wasser rausgepumpt, reingepumpt wird und wieder rausgepumpt wird. Und das ist, deswegen ist dort ein sehr geringer Einfluss nur auf die, auf die Umwelt. Und ja, ja viel mehr gibt es ja nicht zu sagen. Sie wollen, und das ist eigentlich schon das Interessante, sie haben immer verkauft, eigentlich so beim Produktionsbeginn oder wo die dann die Produktion aufgebaut werden soll. Das war bei Kali und Salz so, das war bei, äh, beim Lithium-Projekt so und das soll jetzt bei diesem Projekt auch sein und sie gehen davon aus, dass sie 2025 Ende, 2025, das heißt in zwei Jahren, äh, dieses Stadium auch dort erreicht haben müssen. Sie haben eine Million ungefähr noch Cash, er geht davon aus, dass sie irgendwann einmal äh, in diesem Zeitraum 24, 25, 10 Millionen raisen werden, dann ist das durchfinanziert und dann können sie es dementsprechend wieder verkaufen. Wundert mich gar nicht, also das ist nicht viel Geld, muss man auch ehrlich sagen, für Bankable Feasibility Study, für die ganzen Umblätterauflagen. Ähm, das ist 
sehr vernünftige Kalkulation, also relativ wenig Geld, da könnten Sie relativ viel auch damit anfangen. Das heißt, selbst bei diesem niedrigen Aktienkurs, was wir jetzt momentan haben, würde es einfach nur mehr Verdoppelung des Grundkapitals sein und, und dann wäre die Sache eigentlich gegessen. Ich glaube, dass Sie gute Chancen haben, dass das Geld auch ohne große Verwässerung kriegen. Ja, doch selber gesagt, das könnten auch strategische Partner sein, Off-Tech Agreements und so weiter, die dann dementsprechend einsteigen bei einer. Jedenfalls liegt das Projekt sehr, sehr gut. Der größte Markt ist Brasilien, dann kommt USA, aber auch Asien ist sehr in der Nähe. Und wie gesagt, es gibt drei große Produzenten derzeit, Kanada, Russland und Weißrussland. Und Weißrussland und Russland wissen wir die Probleme, daher haben die fallen die teilweise am Markt aus. Es gibt eine Unterproduktion, das hatten wir auch Kali und Salz eben bestätigt und das ist eigentlich relativ spannend. Also wir könnten wieder zur richtigen Zeit, am richtigen Ort sein. Unglaublich, also manches Management hat wirklich ein Händchen dafür, zur richtigen Zeit, am richtigen Ort zu sein. Man sollten Sie es auf jeden Fall ähm, auf der Agenda haben, weil wie gesagt, das Management hat es eigentlich schon bewiesen, dass sie es kann. Ja, hoffen wir es, werden Sie auch jetzt ein glückliches Händchen haben. So, das war's für heute. Ähm, ich wünsche euch einen schönen äh, Abend noch, schönen Nachmittag und äh, wir hören uns in Kürze. Tschüss und Baba für dich. <lacht>